Hi, I'm Deborah Johnson, and today we're going to do number 19 on Truth to Go. Um, it's waking up unto the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity. Help us just to stay focused and believe your word. In your precious son's name, amen. If you're not saved, trust the blood of Christ. He died, was buried, rose again. His blood paid for all your sins. It's as simple as believing. Um, do that today. Okay, so what we're going to do is talk about, I don't know about you, but when I wake up in the morning, all of a sudden, you know, some at least sometimes I remember some of my dreams and sometimes they're chaotic, a lot of problems and issues that have happened. And, um, and then I wake up to sometimes even a more stark reality of life itself and all the things on my plate for the day and all the things that happened the day or the week before, and they flood into my mind. And it's hard to really get started in the day until you shake that off. And so how do you shake it off? Well, um, in a sense, your dreams are dreams and they there's some reality to them, but it's not real. So recognizing that, most of us understand that. But in a way, that's the way life is. We are here only for a short time. And our, as if you're a believer and you're, you're saved, your reality is above. And so that's where we need to set our affection on things above in Colossians 3. And not on the things of this earth and not on the focusing on all the problems. Oh, we need to recognize them and deal with the problems. But that's not where our focus needs to be. And so in the beginning of your day, get a hard reset and focus on things above, what you have, being thankful, um, thinking on these things. It's the physical realm is really not the reality of our eternal life. It's just a short time that God has us here to be ambassadors and servants for him. So our reality is that we are seated in Christ, in the heavenlies. And so what we're doing here is for that purpose. So we need to reset our thinking and remember that these things are for but, uh, but for a moment. <clears throat> uh, Ephesians 2, 2 and 3. Sometimes we get caught in this thinking. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Sometimes our reality gets clouded by all of Satan's course for this world, and all the problems are exalted. Among whom also we had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Sometimes we get caught up and we're caught into that reality. We want to step away. That is not who we are. Even in our thinking, we don't want to have that influence. And so what, what we want to do is realize who we are in Christ and work out our own salvation in fear and trembling, it says in Philippians 2.12. It is in fear and trembling. These things are scary. Sometimes walking by faith, it's contrary to our flesh. But that is what we need to do. And um, be, so before we get out of bed, think on some things. Like Romans 12. Let's, let's go there. It's one of my go-to place, places. Um, Romans 12, verse 2. This is how it's done, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Don't be conformed by his course, Satan's course, the why on the road. When you are thinking that way, you need to get on the other way, and a hard reset in the morning before you get out of bed really helps. Um, <clears throat> and that way you can allow God to be your focus instead of all the problems. 
dwell through the day, determined to dwell on the word, <clears throat> setting your affection on things above. That's who you are. That's your real reality. Be mindful of what's going on in your mind and the words and your behavior in line with who you are in Christ. So as you do a hard reset in the morning, that makes it a lot more feasible that you will have the mind of Christ and you'll focus on that. Bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Being aware. That's um, uh, 2 Corinthians 10. So thankfulness and focus. Focus on what God's doing in you, what his full provision is, rather than the problems. Knowing we have all things already. God does not need to um, intervene uh, in your life and heal or take away a problem. God just designed his word to work in your inner man to help you get through through the difficulties of life, not only just to get through it, but for them to work in you. <clears throat> Philippians 4. Philippians 4 is important. It says, verse 1, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and my crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. That's what God wants. He wants us to stand fast. And he's designed his word in a progressive way to build us up, edify us in the doctrine. One precept upon another precept. Line upon line, here a little, there a little. Keep working through it. Read, reread. Through your life, it's a journey of faith. And so what he does in chapter 4 of Philippians is he kind of gives you an outline of what to do. In verse 6, it says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. You need to be thankful. Not focus just on the problems, but focus on what God is doing and being thankful. Give them your problems and then move on. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That's what we want. We want peace. Finally, brethren, he says in verse 8, he get 8 and 9 give you some things to do. 8, meditate. Think on these things. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. That's meditation. And all that is is a listing of all the things, the qualities, and the fruit of the word of God. <clears throat> In 9, it says, Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, Paul, do. Do those things, and the God of peace shall be with you. The God, you will have the peace of God in verse 7, and the God of peace will be with you as you walk through the difficulties. How does he do that? Well, he gives you some things. I'm just pulling a few verses out of this chapter, but go back and read the context. Read all of Philippians. It's on the back of um, Ephesians 6, which is giving you the armor. He's telling you how to do it. And so here he says in verse 13 of uh, Philippians 4, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. The inner man strength. It's God leading you by the Spirit through the Word. That's Christ in you to be able to go through whatever difficulty and, and for you it to be successful and powerfully working in you. Not only for you, now and eternity, but all those that see you will be impacted. The ripple effect. And then also trusting. Verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need, that spiritual need, according to the riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He's telling you in the context to learn contentment in whatsoever state you are. But your hope is above spiritual things set your affection on things above colossians uh 3 1 through 
about four. It set your affection on the spiritual things. Don't get detoured and pulled down and pulled aside by the physical things and focused on wanting deliverance from things. God has given you everything. The power is in you, not in God changing your circumstances. Um, <clears throat> so what he wants is you to shake off the the um the physical challenges and and that focus and exalting the problems and, and really satan's course for this world he wants you to focus keep your focus fixed and dwell on his word don't be entangled in the affairs of this life trust god in you <clears throat> living above his grace is sufficient when you do that the power of Christ will rest on you, and you can get through anything. Know your position. Know who, who where, you're, where you live. You live above. You're seated in the heavenlies. Romans 8, let's, let's end with that. Romans 8, I'm going to read this. It's our confidence. It's our hope. And when we dwell on this, it enables us to really see some things. It's a summary of Romans 1 through 8, really. <clears throat> Excuse me. What shall we say? Verse 31. What shall we say then to these things? If God before us, who can be against us in this life? Anything. Shall, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? That freely gives us all spiritual things. Excuse me. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? How can anyone charge you with any sin? You've been forgiven. It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that dieth, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. I'm sorry. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Oh, we are killed all day long, but we are not sheep, dumb sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, <clears throat> Even if you woke up and that was the only verse that you had time to read, it is such an encouragement. Think on these things and God will be able to keep you, keep you focused, leading captive every thought to the obedience of Christ. And, and every time you're off and focused on the flesh and fleshly things, he will redirect you. Um, start that as a habit in the morning. Do that by prayer, by remembering all the things that you're thankful for and getting in the word. It will set your day in a different direction, but you need to really um, <clears throat> wake up and determine to do it. Otherwise, Satan in the course of this world, it's a strong lure. It will grab you and pull you down that road. This can start a new habit. In your precious son's name, we thank you and praise you. Amen.